So let's really pray that God will just cause a quick recovery. Amen. <laughs> Father, we just thank you for Sister Cynthia. Lord, we thank you for this handmaiden of the Lord. Lord, she just, uh, just loves you, and we just praise you that she does so much to minister to people in the house of the Lord. We thank you at this time you'd really give her a time of rest. And we pray that, Father, you give her speedy recovery. We thank you, Father, for restoration of health for her physical body. We thank you, Lord, that, God, you just uh, have your hand of favor and uh, just special blessing upon her right now. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, uh, recovered. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. All right, Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 to 11. Now the serpent, which is actually uh, <coughs> Satan embodying this serpent. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Now, this is the first question question that you will find in the Bible. And the, the one that gave the question is the devil. And that's exactly what the devil wants to do. He likes to put question marks in your mind. He wants you to doubt the word of God. He knew that God said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. But then he says, has God indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? So he tries to place, place a doubt in your mind when he says that. And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the tree of, of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Now the, the, the error that Eve made when she uh, responded to the devil is that she should not have even, even spoken to him. She should have just rebuked him in the name of the Lord. But instead of that, she entered into a conversation with the devil. Don't do that. And so don't talk with the devil. We're to talk with the Lord. And so because she did that, uh, she began to get sucked in. And it says uh, in verse 4, Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die. Now, that's an outright lie. And he is the father of lies. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Now, up until that time, the only thing they knew was good. But then he says, you'll be like God when you partake of this fruit, and you'll know good and evil. Now, as we go on, so when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. Now, the Eve was deceived. So Eve succumbed to the temptation because of deception. But Adam, he knew, because God spoke to him directly and told him that he shall not eat of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So Adam was not deceived, is what the Bible tells us. So you see, Eve fell to the temptation because of deception. Adam fell to the temptation because of affection. He had to choose now between Eve and God. And what he did was he chose the woman. <laughs> oh, man. Men, you have to watch out. <laughs> and so, it says in verse 7, Then the eyes of both of them were open, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together because they were so ashamed and embarrassed and made themselves coverings. 
prior to that, you know what was their covering? It was the light of God. It was the light of God that was their garment. And when they partook of that fruit, boom, that light just totally disappeared. And all of a sudden, they saw themselves, they saw their nakedness. Can you imagine? And now, in replacement of the light of God, they have to put on aprons of fig leaves. I mean, what a, uh, what a contrast. And so, it says here, Then, in verse 8, they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. And before, when, when, when God would be walking through the garden, oh, they would just want to just see him and fellowship with him. This time they hid themselves. Then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? And remember, it's not location, but it's actually, it's it's condition. In other words, are you in darkness or are you in light? So he said, I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree of which I commanded you that you should not eat? And then we go on and we read it read the story, we find out that then Adam says, oh, it's the woman, she's the one, and he blames shifts, and he blames her, he says, she's the one that gave me of the fruit, the woman that you gave me. And then the woman says, no, it was the serpent. And so everybody's just passing the buck, and then the serpent, of course, gets cursed, the man gets cursed, and also the woman gets cursed. That time, original sin took place, and man fell into darkness. And so let me just, once again, draw our famous illustration that here was Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, and what happened was the serpent came and then deceived both Adam and Eve, and because of that, man fell, and this is when original sin occur, original sin. When original sin took place, remember there are three things that happened. That there was separation from God, there was sin, the sin nature that man received, and then there was satanic control. Okay? So separation, sin, and Satan. So what happened is that man fell, and when men fell, they fell into an unsaved condition. Now, <clears throat> ooh, let me try to, I want to add something here. I want to try to draw smaller this time. And then man received a flesh nature, a fallen nature, a sin nature. And remember we told you the flesh is made up of two parts, right? It is made up of the evil part and then it is made up also of the good part. Now, question. When the evil side of the flesh does works, what do we call that? Bad works. Bad works. When the good side of the flesh does works, what do we call that? Yeah. Dead works. Okay. Now most people would say good works, but remember we told you God calls this dead works. This is really so important for us to understand Hebrews 6.1, and that's why the Bible tells us there needs to be, the foundation is that there needs to be repentance from dead works, as it tells us here in Hebrews chapter 6 and in verse 1. 
All right.